The Whistling Tree Frog. The only naturalized tree frog in New Zealand. Now, these guys are amazing animals. They're very, very small tree frog species. And they are the only tree frog species, like I said, in New Zealand, and originally from Australia, and now naturalized in New Zealand. When they first morph into froglets out of the tadpole phase, as you can see, they're very, very small, the size of our thumbnails. Now, they start with a fairly uh, slimy skeletal phase, and then they'll morph into the more uh, whistling tree frog uh, structural uh, and physical form that you'll see as they get older and older. Looking after them is quite easy. You just need a lot of vegetation, a lot of greenery, a lot of things for them to climb, trees, plants, branches. They are boreal in nature. And also their food when they're that small out of their tadpole phase is of course wingless fruit flies, fruit flies, any small bugs you can catch, even small white worms. But that's the best thing to give them once they get out of their tadpole phase. These guys are small so they will struggle with house flies and blow flies until they're a lot bigger. Now they are rather delicate in this small phase. You have to, especially if you're keeping them in small colonies, I've got four in this terrarium, and you really wanna make sure that there's no competition for food. So you wanna make sure that they're all eating well, they're all plump, they're all growing quickly. Just make sure they've got plenty of food, plenty of sources to hide, microclimates, access to natural sunlight, and I think they will flourish on their own as long as you have the right environment, right humidity, plenty of moisture. They don't need a lot of water, but they do need, or they would, I guess really accept and enjoy a little dish of water. Now the actual terrarium itself, it doesn't matter if you've got an aquarium, terrarium, little plastic enclosure, whatever it is, it's really, really easy, right? For this, I've got soil, I've got uh, some, hard, uh, some hardscape, which is some bits of wood, there's some rocks in there, and a lot of, as you can see, fern-like or small mini pots that I got from a DIY store, but native plants, it doesn't really matter as long as it, there's plenty for them to hide in, to climb. They like being on the floor, but they also love being nice and up high, being tree frogs. As you can see, they climb around, they spend a lot of time at the top. Especially if they're getting, or well, they need some access to sunlight, they will spend a lot of their time on the outer perimeter where the light is right up nice and high. And also you'll spot them down the bottom in the vegetation and the leaf litter, because they also like to hide and hunt food on the ground as well. Now they do eat a lot, you can feed them daily and you don't have to w w think or worry too much about the seasons here in New Zealand because they do like cold climates. They actually flourish in our South Island and our South Island gets pretty cold. We get snow, we get the Southern Alps, so they actually flourish in cold temperatures. So you can feed them all throughout winter. They don't necessarily or don't, they do not go into a, a phase of hibernation or even slowing down. And my experience with our whistling tree frogs breeding, keeping them for a long time is that they'll generally eat and be active all year round, but they'll obviously only breed coming into spring. Now, as you can see, when they get out of that uh, froglet phase, they start looking more and more like their adult phase or what they're supposed to look like when they're full grown whistling tree frogs. They go from shades, so a really light cream, to a really nice dark brown, depending on where they are, if they're in direct sunlight, if they're up high, if they're sitting on a log, or in the, amongst the pebbles and rocks, they do change their color. They're super cool animals, absolutely gorgeous colorations, and really, really cool tree frogs to keep as pets. Now being tree frogs, they are very, very good climbers. They can climb up the glass, they can climb up any shrubs or any arboreal stimulus or enrichment you've got in their terrariums or enclosures, but they also can be very clumsy, especially when they're hunting. They don't really have, um, they don't really rely on a tongue like you would traditionally a fly, frog or a chameleon where the tongue goes out miles away from their body. They are more uh, predatory or ambush hunters where they will try to get close to their prey as possible and they will lunge and try and catch with just their mouth.
Now whistling tree frogs are nocturnal by trade, so they'll spend the majority of their day actually hunting at night and being alert and active at night. But in the day, of course, if they're hungry enough, they will hunt for insects, but they're not the most graceful hunters in the, during the day or with any lighting. As you can see, really struggling to get close to the fly. The range of motion or the scale ratio is not great, but in the evenings, when you get out and have a look at them in the evenings, they are almost crypt, cryptic-like. What I love about whistling tree frogs is A, it's the only tree frog we have in New Zealand. They're amazing frogs, they're amazing animals. They're super cool to keep in captivity, especially if you have reptiles, amphibians in your collections. I think they're really, really cool and fascinating to watch. They're cool to breed and they're really easy to look after once you understand how to look after them. Comparing to the golden bells or the southern bells we have, they are really, really cool frogs. They don't get that big, so really good for space if you want a smaller frog enclosure, but otherwise guys, if you like this video, like and subscribe, otherwise stay tuned for the next one.